This is Street Knowledge with Chris Graham. Welcome to the podcast. Chris Graham and Rod Mullins. We're talking some NASCAR here on Monday, and it's Speed Week. And we've got a lot to talk about to get you ready for the Daytona 500. And first, let's look back to the uh, to the, the, to the class race this past weekend. If you want to call it the clash, I love the, the, the lead of the story on the NBC Sports website. Maybe we should call it crash instead of the clash. With uh, the race cut short after a massive wreck, uh, also some rain, uh, but uh, Jimmy Johnson gets the win. He was involved in the crash. A lot of folks were involved in the crash. Take us back, uh, Ron, and uh, break down what happened in the class race. Well, you know, I think I said something last week when we were talking on the podcast about waiting for that big one to happen and see what was going to happen, and sure enough, it did. They made it up to lap 55, scheduled 75 laps of this race, of this clash, the Advanced Auto Parts clash that they have at Daytona. And all of a sudden, Jimmy Johnson sees the window starting to close up. And when I say the window, it's not the racing, it's the weather window. Because just a little while earlier, they had made a comment on the radios, and one of the comments that was made was if, if they go, somebody was a little bit late, on signaling uh, that there was a rain delay. That was one thing that had happened because there was rain on one end of the track and it was coming in. And so Jimmy Johnson, being the driver that he is, when the go-ahead was given to start this race back again, or at least that it's safe enough for it to start back again, they started making the free-for-all. It was the free-for-all to get to the, the lead and hopefully be in position that if the race was red flag that somebody would come out the winner and Jimmy Johnson was one of the people involved. But what happened was he ended up tagging Paul Menard, slightly moving down the track. And Well, he moved down the track, I should say, and Johnson kind of running second. They make contact. Johnson tagged him in the left rear of the uh, Wood Brothers, Menard, uh, Paul Menard car, and Menard goes into the fence, into the wall, the hard get into the wall, outside retaining wall, collected several cars, Here's the big thing, Chris, right here. You had five Go Gifts cars that were involved in, in one way or another in that big calamity wreck right there with, you know, 20 some laps to go, something like that. $300,000 total on those cars all together. And some of these cars are the cars that they have either as a backup or this is the car they're going to start for the race come Sunday. So now they're having to go back and they're having to do redo some things. I mean, Denny Hamlin was involved as well as Kenneth Harvick, uh, Austin Dillon, Clint Boyer, Eric Jones, uh, Daniel Suarez, Chase Elliott. Uh, there were a bunch that was involved in this wreck, and uh, there's been some quietness about it. Uh, I don't think Ryan Newman's been very upset about it, but uh, when it came down to it, Paul Menard just said, you know, it sucks more than anything else that has had a breath of side dra- uh, drafting cause that big crash right there toward the end of the race. Yeah, so a lot of work, overtime work being done this week uh, by race teams getting ready for, for Sunday's race. And, of course, now let's talk about the poll, the, the qualifying. Uh, first two spots are filled. William Byron wins the poll, and Hendrick once again dominating qualifying at Daytona. Yeah, Hendrick has now just stepped back up. And this has been done with a swapping of crew chiefs. So to speak. So, I mean, the first time that William Byron and Chad Canals have been able to work together, I mean, they've had some time probably during the off season to be able to talk and get together and kind of do a little bit of some practice together. But they go and capture the pole at 194.305 miles per hour. And Alex Bowman, driving the old Dale Earnhardt Jr. 88 car, who won last year's pole, He'll sit on the outside of the front row at 194.154 miles an hour. And according to Byron, you know, he drives the Liberty car, and they've also got some other sponsorship in there, the Exalted Paint brand and so forth. So he's giving some credit to Jack and Alf and all the guys back at Hendrick because to him, it's been a great offseason, and he feels like they're prepared. This is the best situation that they have had in a long time. And for Byron and Bowman to be on the front row for Hendrick Motorsports, you know, it helps a whole lot. And then on top of that, you know, uh, Hendrick drivers swept the four top spots in Sunday's qualifying because Jimmy Johnson will also start in there with his new crew chief, uh, Kevin Mendeering, uh, and then you'll have Chase Elliott in there. So even though Chase Elliott got collected in that wreck and so forth there in that uh, clash, 
it ended up now that Jimmy Johnson's going to be in there in the, the top four along with Chase Elliott. And then the remainder of the 40 car field for 500 will be set during Thursday's two qualifying dash races that they had. So it'll be interesting to see who's going to be uh, uh, buying from those other spots. But two are sealed, and that means Hendrick is going to dominate on the front row to start the race. We don't know how they'll be toward the end of the race, though. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about qualifying. You talked about, uh, I think, Chase Elliott, you mentioned. Uh, three cars, including Elliott's car, failed inspection twice before qualifying on Sunday. And that's going to have some repercussions throughout the rest of the week. Take us into that. Yeah, well, you know, this was one of those things of, uh, I guess, the, they're lowering the boom right now to start seeing how things are going to happen. Because Chase Elliott, Austin Dillon, and Ty Dillon, each one of them failed inspection twice before the Daytona 500 on Sunday. So their car chief has now been ejected for the rest of the speed week. They won't be allowed back at the track until after the Daytona 500. They have no, they will have no connection with this team whatsoever. These guys might as well just head on back, fly back to Charlotte or wherever their home base is at because they don't get to do anything else for the rest of the speed week. And each team will also lose 15 minutes of practice time this week. So the crew, or the car chief for Austin Dillon is Greg Ebert. Uh, Ty Dillon is Billy Floyd, and then Chase Elliott is Josh Kirk. Now, the crew chief and the car chief, they're a little bit of a difference there. The crew chief is the one that makes all the calls there on top of the pit box. The car chief is the one that is mainly the person that's responsible for making sure the car is supposed to be set for inspection. And when that fails, that's where the, uh, the boom gets lowered on each one of these car chiefs. And so they're not going to be able to enjoy speed weeks. Uh, and Daytona this coming week, uh, they'll be starting back over at the race number two uh, when they get finished at Daytona. But I will say this, Chad can now know that the inspection system now that NASCAR has put in place is much faster, and there is not going to be a lot of delay and hanging time for some of these teams to have to wait and wonder what's going to happen to them. They move them through pretty fast, so they must have something down pretty quick because these three got pegged immediately uh, before qualifying on Sunday. We talked about the rules changes just last week, already seeing an impact from them. And so uh, good to see NASCAR following through with something that they put in place in the offseason. So let's talk about the duels. Coming up on Thursday, the lineup set. Uh, that we've got some more racing coming up. And uh, what can we look forward to on Thursday, Rod? Well, uh, I think you'll see some more testing and some more aggressiveness also to test and see how these cars are going to be performing out on the track. Uh, from what little bit I watched of the, of the race this past weekend of the, uh, of the, uh, the clash or the crash, as you put it early on, um, I think you're going to see some, uh, some passing. Uh, you're going to see some teams that's going to have to get a lot of momentum going in order to make the pass. Uh, Johnson, fortunately enough, had enough speed going around, but it wasn't enough when he ended up flipping a Menard and sending him around. I think we're almost back to a setup that reminds me of going back, oh, at least five, six years ago, when all these cars seemed to stuck together in sections or blocks, so to speak. And you really had to have somebody up on your bumper. And, you know, here's a rule change, too. Here's another thing that they have they said. You can only be behind a car providing them with enough draft and air, pushing them along on the uh, on the straightaways and so forth for just uh, so many seconds. And if after a while they uh, verify that you have been in too much contact or you're right up on the rear bumper, the rear spoiler part of that car uh, back in there in the back, you're going to be penalized for it. Uh, so, you know, they're trying to at least break that up a little bit when we used to have our long, I would almost call them long uh, freight trains as they went through at Daytona going around the track and so forth. And you'd have about eight or ten cars that would dial in and move away from the rest of the pack. And then one moves out, the rest of the cars compensate, and that other car drops to the main back or goes back very quickly. That so they just don't have the, the process of speed and that clean air going. Clean air is going to be important, I think, for the for the, uh, for the Dash this week uh, coming up on Thursday. It's going to be very important, especially coming up on uh, Sunday to the Daytona 500. They've got to have clean air. They're going to have to keep on moving, kind of zigzagging back and forth in there to kind of get a little piece of air at times, keep that uh, pressure, and also keep that temperature gauge from 
spiking up and going uh, to where it was an inch and up before. So with some of these cars will get way over 200 and some degrees, these engines, and then they'll start out for a little bit of air to kind of cool the engine off a little bit because they are running full speed and they don't want to have any kind of, I guess, force holding them back from being able to do what they need to do on uh, Thursday and Sunday. So this 60 lap, these two 60 lap races, um, you know, they'll still have Byron out there in the front and Bowman who will be starting second, but it will be interesting to see who's going to be uh, the winner out of this. This will set the rest of the stages from third, fourth, and on down through to the very last car that will make it in to the big out of five hundred. Okay, so to wrap our show in a few minutes, we'll talk. We'll, we'll preview the Daytona 500, but a couple of off-track news and notes bits. Jeffrey Earnhardt gets a 19-race sponsorship with Joe Gibbs in the Xfinity Series. Well, what's what's the news there, Rod? Well, I think it's good news, especially for Jeffrey Earnhardt, because he's been bumped around at a number of uh, race teams. Uh, some have been a potential, I mean, good teams. Some have not uh, have not been that uh, have not been all that great. But he's going to be going in the Xfinity Series this year. He's going to be racing 24 races this year. As Extreme Contest has announced a partnership with Jim Gibbs Racing, and they will sponsor Jeffrey Earnhardt. Also, Kyle Busch will be racing in that car some, and Brandon Jones across those 24 NASCAR races this year. So, I K9, uh, they are a K9 solution provider. They're going to be sponsoring the car. Earnhardt will drive at nine of those races of the number 18 Toyota, and those races will include uh, Daytona, Atlanta, Talladega, Charlotte, Pocono, Mid-Ohio, Road America, ISM in Phoenix, and Homestead, Miami. So it's good for him because this is Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s grandson, and this is an opportunity for him to be able to get his name out there and keep that Earnhardt name out front and center, even though we know Dale Jr. is in the press box now, you still have some Earnhardt that still love to drive, and Jeffrey Earnhardt is one of them. I know a couple of years ago I had a chance to uh, see Jeffrey Earnhardt in the media center at Bristol, and he was really celebrating in August the, uh, the signing of Hulu. And if you don't know who Hulu is, Hulu is one of the great streamers, uh, streaming services that you can get on a lot of uh, different TVs and systems right now. Hulu was really excited about it, but he didn't have as good a season toward the very end and Hulu dropped sponsorship. He was left without a ride, kind of jumping back and forth with some other people. But for him, kind of getting into this Toyota and with a Joe Gibbs pricey car, I think he's got a pretty good chance of being able to show he's got some uh, driver skills and at least some Earnhardt driving skills that'll prove him quite worthy in the Infinity too. Uh, some more Earnhardt-related news, in a way. Baseball news, too, in a way. Uh, a team that carried a, a nickname uh, from Dale Sr. Uh, and his involvement with the team from uh, several years ago uh, is no longer going to have that name. Take us into that story. Well, I don't know if you're familiar with this. I didn't know if you were familiar with the Canapolis Intimidators, but it was a really big deal when they put this together back uh, years ago, and it was... When Dale Earnhardt bought a stake in the team three months before his death of the 2001 Daytona 500, they named this team. It was one of those Class A a teams affiliated with Chicago White Sox, and they named them the Canapolis Intimidators. It was a great name, a great logo. I loved it there for a long time, and I kind of wondered what had ever happened to it. But now, uh, since uh, the years after Dale Senior's death, it continued on. They sold its share in the team. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated did. And the announcement was made on Wednesday. Uh, and it kind of drew a response from Earnhardt's daughter, Kelly Earnhardt Miller. And she's pretty sad about it. She's not, uh, she's not too happy about this whole thing because it was a thing that was expected to kind of go along with the town itself. It's an apple as big as their baseball team. But also, they're kind of big into the guy that put them on the map, and that's Dale Earnhardt thing. So now the team is going to be having a one-week campaign for February 13th. It's going to uh, rename the team, so to speak, and they will uh, not be announcing the name until after the upcoming season is already finished up. Um, it's kind of a sad thing for it to happen and everything. We're going to see the Intimidators go by the wayside, but who knows, somebody else may pick them up or pick the name up, but... It just still will not have the same, I guess, uh, flavor or aura, so to speak, 
with baseball, especially in Class A baseball in the Carolinas and also in that South League that they played in because this was a big deal and stuff. Uh, but, you know, this is how crazy baseball is. Uh, you know, some people were saying uh, in the uh, talk about dropping the Ken Apples Intimidators name, uh, the assistant general manager told NBC Sports that a lot of people are going away now from NASCAR and they hate it, but there's kind of no association there except, I guess, for the old timer. So we're going to see what happens, I guess, when all of this stuff is uh, changed over, at least by the end of the season. Well, you, you could, we could still vote. We could, we could encourage our listeners to go vote for the name. And vote for the Intimidators. It suggests Intimidators or, or the, the Fighting Threes or whatever you think of. And uh, maybe maybe throw that contest in a good direction. Um, those, that's how those kind of things work. Uh, I'll tell you this. It's a lot better name. The Intimidators is a lot better name than what the uh, baseball team in Alabama is going to be named. They're going to be named in the honor of Rocket Raccoon from the Garden, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy film. The Rocket Kitty Trash Band. I just don't think that flies with this. Yeah. Yeah, there was some contest for a soccer team name, and it was like the, the winning entry was like Bodie McBoatface or something, because that's how you can throw these kind of contests. So well, maybe we can throw it in the right direction uh, as far as that goes. But uh, yeah, it's marketing, and it's you know it's a way to get people engaged, I suppose. So we are here at the stage where we're finally talking about the first actual NASCAR points race of the season coming up on Sunday, the Daytona 500. And, Ron, okay, this is the easy question for me to ask, hard one for you to answer, but what can we expect to see on Sunday? Uh, uh, probably what we saw in the advanced auto part uh, crash, I mean clash that we saw on Sunday. We'll probably see the big one happen. Uh, I think there'll be some people that will probably, probably be saying to the other drivers in the driver meeting, you guys are going to have to watch yourself on aggressive out there. Jimmy Johnson – Right now, is not apologetic. He's not apologetic for what he did in this flash race. And, uh, you know, I can't blame him. In one way, he's out there to win a race. Uh, even though it's a trophy, it's a little bit of money for him, but he's out there to win a race. And there's going to be about 41 or 42 other guys that's going to be out there, too, that's going to be looking to win a race. And, you know, this is the granddaddy of them all. This is the Super Bowl. As you put it last week, this is the Super Bowl of stock car racing. Whereas most teams or most sports have theirs at the end of the season, Daytona kicks it off with the start of the season. And we always see something happen at Daytona. We've seen such things happen as Dale Earnhardt capturing his first ever Daytona 500 victory. Uh, you've had uh, Trevor Bain, who unfortunately I saw a, a tweet this past week from Trevor Bain that Trevor's going to be sitting home probably watching the Daytona 500 home this year because he doesn't have a ride. So you're going to be seeing a pass winner sitting at home watching the race. And then you've got some of these others in here that are looking to come away with a big win. You know, William Byron could come away with a big win this week. If Kendrick is able to have solved the problem in their engine that they had off and on throughout the season, and they just weren't contending for that top spot a number of times, except for Chase Elliott out there, you know, they, they could have the problem solved. We might see a strong four-pack running of cars if they can all stay together team-wise. But, uh, you know, you, you can't count out the Gibbs cars before it's over with. Kyle Bush will be in there. I'll tell you one sleeper that, uh, that I think could surprise a lot of people, and I've been hearing some comments about it. Don't rule out for Bush. They say that uh, Tip Ganassi Racing and uh, the, the car, the monster energy drink number one Chevrolet, they said it was really moving and really hustling through uh, some of the practice sessions and also through the clash on Sunday. So Kurt Busch could be looking for another Daytona 500 win, but with a different team this time around. So, you know, it's going to be bumper to bumper. It's going to be door handle to door handle. And I think especially down toward the last 15, maybe 18 laps of this contest, it could get very dicey. You're going to see a lot of shuffling back and forth. You're going to see some cars maybe even get turned around. And, yes, could we go into overtime and then finally declare a victory that way? It could very well happen. This could be a Daytona 558, I think, this time around, uh, this coming Sunday. Gentlemen, start your engines. It's uh, about that time. You know, pitchers and catches reporting. I'm a baseball guy as well. So pitchers and catches reporting for spring training. College baseball starts on Friday and, and Daytona on Sunday. Spring can't be that far away, 
Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing, boys. Hey, Rod, thanks for your time today. No problem, Chris. Thank you.